Hi, I'm Armin from Notch. This video is a sample chapter from our content intermediate course on how to connect procedural and cloner system in Notch Builder. The Content Intermediate course is for designers and artists who want to create stunning Notch content. It builds on the already available Free Notch Essentials course and dives deeper into more advanced topics and techniques. If you have a base or pro license with Notch, this course is available to you for free. Just head over to the Learn section of our homepage. If you don't have base or pro license, the course is currently available for purchase at a reduced price. Without further ado, Here's the sample chapter, enjoy. Welcome back to Content Intermediate Course. In this workshop, we're gonna talk about procedurals and clones and how do we connect them. So here we have a more or less finished setup. This is what we are after. I'm gonna enable the fifth layer here, procedurals, clones, start. And uh, let's get going. But before we actually add any nodes, let's just talk about the nodes that we have here in the node graph. We have several nodes responsible for the lighting. So we have Fox scattering for the background, one spotlight here at the top, skylight and environment map working for the general lighting. We have a camera that we're looking through now, a shape 3D set to a plane, which is working as a floor for us. And here at the top, we have one more shape 3D set to a box, which is rendering only the outlines of this primitive. So we could see where are our bounds for our procedural system that we are to build. Right, so let's start by building a small procedural system. I'm going to add a procedural root, a procedural meshing, and several 3D primitives. There we go. So this is my first one. I think I want this a little bit smaller. And I'm going to make a copy of it. I'm going to connect the second one beneath it. Let's move the second one a little bit higher and perhaps let's set it to a box. I'll make it smaller still. I'm going to change the CSG mode from union to smooth union. So my goal here now is to build a little abstract shape that we can send to cloner system. So having a box here will definitely look good. Let's see if we can add a little bit more blend weight. I'll make another 3D primitive and I think I'm going to set this one to a torus. And I'm going to move it downwards. Let's rotate it. Could be bigger. Perhaps it should have a little bit bigger inner radius. There we are. Perfect. Let's change a couple of things in a procedural meshing. I think I want to make sure that it's a bit smoother, so I'm going to add some smoothing iterations, perhaps 20. And I'm going to make sure to seal boundaries just in case. There we go. So here we have our procedural system, and if we want to express it as clones, all we have to do is find the corresponding cloner that could read this information. So I'm going to go for clone to procedurals. I'm connecting it to the root and now I have several inputs here in the bottom. As soon as I hover over the first one, I see that the procedural root lights up and the name of the input indicates procedural root. So I'm going to connect the procedural root exactly there. Now for cloner setup to be complete, cloner needs to have an operator to output. So let's give it a shape 3D. I already see that we are spawning clones on top of this shape. I think we could make the clones a little bit bigger. So I will increase the clone scale. Great, this definitely works. I think I'm going to add one more operator. So I'm going to copy the shape 3D, connect it to the clone to procedurals. And I'm going to make sure that this one is set to a box. So now they're iterating one after the other. And that is because the default setting in the clone to procedurals is node spawn mode iterate. I'm going to go for random. I bet this setup would look much more interesting if these clones were dynamic. So I'm going to add some turbulence as an effector. Let's stick on uniform scale and let's just make sure that they are going up and down in scale. It's a little bit fast, so I'm going to reduce the animation rate. 
In fact, we don't need to see the procedural system anymore. So I can come back to the procedural meshing and set the visibility property to zero. So now we only see the clones being rendered in the shape of this procedural design that we made. So I think there's one more setting that would be interesting to enable. It's a rotate clones by normals. This makes things a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more interesting. I think I'm going to add a material node here and I'm going to share it amongst these two shape 3Ds. I want to enable environment mapping and I want to have a little bit of reflection on both of these shapes. Right, maybe let's reduce the brightness a little bit. And perhaps let's give it a bit more turbulence so it's that more dynamic. In fact, we could add a couple of more effectors. I'm going to go for a randomized effector. There we go. Let's connect it to the second input effectors. Let's tick on uniform scale. And let's reduce the size further still. I think I'm going to change the box setting to a cylinder. Or perhaps capsule. There we go. Let's add one more effector, maybe sine effector. And in the sine effector, let's change the rotation pitch. And let's see if it would look nicer if we would change the direction from linear to, let's say, radial. Yeah, I think this is much, much more exciting than it was before. It would be nice to have a little bit of colors here. So I'm going to add one more effector. Color ramp effector. Now, color ramp effector doesn't work on its own. It requires a color ramp to fulfill its task. So I'm connecting color ramp to the first input, color ramp. So let's make sure that one color is set to maybe light blue and the other one to perhaps, let's say pink. Right, so now in the color effector, I can actually choose the way the color should be distributed in the setting. I actually quite like the looks of the distance source channel distribution. I'm going to make sure that there's just a little bit more of blue. So let's recap what we've built here. Basically, we built a very small procedural system using several 3D primitives. Then we make sure that we do not render it on screen. And then we send it to a clone to procedurals node where we use two operators to render it so a shape 3d set to a sphere and another shape 3d set to a capsule we added several effectors for the dynamics so we would animate and we have applied a material node on both of these operators just so we would have a little bit more of a reflection of the environment map Feel free to push this setting further and once you're ready, let's meet in the last workshop of this chapter where we will be connecting procedurals to field system.